like birds do. Muhammad and a few of his friends stayed in Mecca until everyone had got away and then made plans for their own escape. But the ruling families wanted to kill Muhammad. Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's your girl Fanny Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, don't forget to subscribe. Like I said, my name is Fanny Lungu and on this channel we post reaction videos and if you guys want to suggest something or feel like you need to react to something that's interesting you can let us know in the comment section below by leaving um a title or dropping us a link uh big shout out to everyone that's been suggesting interacting with us subscribing you guys are the best we thank you each and every day and may you stay blessed a big shout out to the person that suggested we react to these videos. As you can tell from the title, before we get to that, um, other than reactions, we also have other things that we do. You can we've got a second YouTube channel called Funny and Jesse 2.0, and you can head there and check out the content that we post there and just enjoy. Other than that, we also do other things like Patreon, podcast. You can find us on social media, Funny and Jesse everywhere. So just feel free to check the links in the description box and you'll find what I'm talking about. So today as you can tell from the title, I'll be reacting to how Islam began in 10 minutes. It says in 10 minutes but the video is actually 8 minutes so I guess we'll have to make our own 10 minutes. So without wasting time let's get into the video. How Islam began in under 10 minutes? Not a problem. We've started. Okay, so travel back in time with me to a land far, far away and long, long ago. Mecca and Arabia, about the year 570. Mecca is important for two reasons. One, the Kaaba is there, an ancient temple built to worship God. And two, Muhammad, peace be upon him, was born in Mecca. Now, problem. I can't show you Muhammad, because it wouldn't be right. I'll tell you why in a bit. But in the meantime, here's his name in Arabic. Nice. Back in the day, Mecca was a lawless place. The only way to be safe was to have backup. Lots of rich big brothers who'd beat up anyone who got in your way. So the place was ruled by the most powerful families who could do pretty much what they wanted. And religion didn't help. By this time, the Kaaba had been filled to overflowing with 360 idols that did nothing to help anyone. So it was a tough place to grow up. If, like Muhammad, you were a poor orphan and believed in just one God you couldn't see, like the Jews and the Christians, he called him Allah, the God, in Arabic there. Muhammad's dad died before he was even born, and his mum died when he was just six. So he was brought up by his grandfather, Abdul Muttalib, and then, when he died too, by his uncle, Abu Talib, who had the respect of the city's ruling families, so Muhammad was safe for the time being. Muhammad started out as a shepherd and then became a businessman traveling about buying and selling stuff for rich clients. When he did some work for a rich widow called Khadija, she was so impressed by his honesty and skill that they ended up getting married. And for a while, it looked like Muhammad was going places. Well, he was, but not how you think. Every year in the month of Ramadan, different calendar, different names for the months, there was a big party around the Kaaba. When people made sacrifices to the idols, Muhammad hated it so he'd get out of town and sleep in a cave he'd found on top of a nearby mountain. One night, Muhammad's praying to Allah when wham! There's the angel Jibreel, you might say Gabriel, standing right in front of him. Read, says the angel, but Muhammad couldn't read. No schools, you see. Jibreel keeps on at him. Three times he says, read. Then he grabs hold of Muhammad and wham! Again, it's like Muhammad's learned the words off by heart. So he recites the message out loud. Read in the name of your Lord, who created man from a drop of blood. Read, for your Lord is most generous. He who taught by the pen, taught man what he did not know. It was a message from Allah. God was speaking to him just like he'd spoken to the prophets in the Jewish and Christian holy books, which meant he was a prophet too. The messages continued for the rest of Muhammad's life. Allah gave him the words to say and the prophet recited them. The words were written down by his friends and years later they were collected together and became the Muslim holy book, the Qur'an, which means recitation, because Muhammad recited it, you see? Anyway, that was much later, so back to the night of power. 
Muhammad tells his family, then his friends, and eventually everyone about Allah that he's the one and only God, that he wants everyone to be treated fairly. And long story short, it didn't go down well with the ruling families of Mecca, who liked things just the way they were. Thank you very much. You see, Islam means obedience to Allah. And Muslim means someone who obeys Allah. And the ruling families didn't want anyone obeying anyone else but them. So the people who believed in Muhammad's message, the Muslims, were given a hard time. Some were even tortured and killed. A few of them managed to escape to Abyssinia, Ethiopia. But most were stuck in Mecca. Muhammad also had to cope with the death of his wife. And then just a few weeks later, his uncle too. Feeling very down, he went to the Kaaba to pray to Allah one night. Then, the weirdest thing happened. Jibreel turns up, sits him on a winged horse called al Burak, and flies him all the way from Mecca to Jerusalem. He prays with all the prophets who have ever lived. Then, he's taken up to the heavens to chat with some of the prophets, and then into paradise itself, where Allah tells Muhammad to pray five times a day and to stay strong. He's returned to Jerusalem, and then flies back to the Kaaba in Mecca. We call it the night journey, and Muslims still argue whether it was a real experience or a vision, but whatever, it gave Muhammad a much needed boost, and just as well, because there were more tough times ahead. So, there was this other city called Yathrib. The people there heard about Muhammad and his message, and invited him and his followers to join them. A few at a time, the Muslims left Mecca and made a dangerous journey across the desert to Yathrib. It's known as a hijra, which means migration, you know, like birds do. Muhammad and a few of his friends stayed in Mecca until everyone had got away and then made plans for their own escape. But the ruling families wanted to kill Muhammad while they still could, so seven sons, one from each family, were sent in the middle of the night to stab the Prophet while he slept. But he was way ahead of them, and when they burst into the house, Muhammad was gone. Trackers were sent out to hunt him down. Muhammad and his best friend Abu Bakr took a roundabout route to try and shake off the pursuit, but the trackers were too good and slowly gained on them. So Muhammad and Abu Bakr hid in the cave and prayed that no one found them. The trackers found the cave all right, but they didn't bother going in to search. There was no way Muhammad could be inside, they thought. There was a spider's web over the mouth of the cave and a nesting bird at the entrance. He must have given them the slip. So off they went, leaving Muhammad and Abu Bakr protected by a spider and a bird. Muhammad made it safely to Yathrib, which was renamed Medina al Nabi, the city of the Prophet, but most people just call it Medina. But Muhammad's worries weren't over yet. There were three big battles between the Muslims and the Meccans. First, the Battle of Badr, when Muhammad and just 313 men faced 1,000 Meccan soldiers. Miraculously, the Muslims won. Then, there was the Battle of Uhud which didn't go so well. Some of Muhammad's men disobeyed his orders and ran off during the battle to raid the Meccans' camp, and so the Muslims were outmaneuvered. Then there was a battle of the trench. Medina was protected on three sides by mountains, so when the Meccan forces advanced in the city, the Muslims just dug a deep trench. The Meccans made camp, but the weather was terrible. Pouring rain put out their fires and howling winds blew down their tents. Eventually they gave up and went back to Mecca. It was all a bit embarrassing. They were losing the respect of the local tribes who were flocking to join the Muslims. So a peace treaty was signed at Hudaybiyah. But it wasn't long before the Meccans broke it. Muhammad decided that enough was enough. By now he had over 10,000 men, so he led them across the desert to Mecca. The ruling families realized they'd made a huge mistake, but it was too late. All they could do was surrender and hope that the Muslim army killed them quickly. But Muhammad said there should be no more fighting. He rode into Mecca and went straight to the Kaaba. He circled it seven times anti-clockwise and smashed all the idols, rededicating the Kaaba to Allah. And that's why I'm not going to show you Muhammad. The Muslims wanted to make it totally clear that they only worshipped the one unseen God. So, they didn't have any pictures of Muhammad in case anyone thought he was an idol, and they didn't have any pictures of Allah because he's like nothing on earth, so it would be impossible to draw him anyway. So there you go, how Islam began in under 10 minutes. How did I do?
hmm. how Islam began I guess in under 10 minutes this was interesting to watch some of these things that were said actually um, we've reacted to them in different videos I wanted to ask or please someone please clarify so is this video saying Islam began with Muhammad or what and another thing I wanted to ask was or rather I wanted to say is I've always been wondering why someone has to pray five times why five times why pray five times in a day and my conclusion was that giving yourself time because we've got plenty of time we've got like 24 hours what are you doing in that 24 hours that you can pray five times I feel like that's why things don't change once you like you pray five times you're more focused on certain things that you want in life i guess maybe you're asking for god to grant you something you focus on that point each and every time that you pray otherwise that's just what i was thinking otherwise this was a very interesting video and a big shout out to the person that requested this i hope you guys enjoyed the video as much as i did so let me know what you guys think about the video any contributions to whatever was said in this video and yeah let us know in the comment section make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and i'll definitely see you in my next reaction video